Welcome to Mailbag, where I spend my money so you don't have to spend yours. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Alright, let's see what's in this bag. Okay, I don't remember ordering any more of those, but apparently I did. Okay, so these are some hard drive flex cables. I think they're 2012 13 inch MacBook. I think that's what they're from. So that's a 821-1480A. So here's a, uh, a big one from RS. I don't remember what, actually what I purchased, but yeah, we'll find out. T O I four C N. Ah, that's right. Number. Okay. And T O I eight one C P. So these are parts which I thought I might need for that Marconi Fruits counter, which I worked on recently. And um, yeah, they're basically off amps. I didn't have any. I thought I did have some, but. I couldn't find them anyway, so I've got some more. And these are getting hard to get. There was, I think, it was the some of these aren't made anymore, but you can get them still a little bit if you're careful. Look around a little bit. There was something else I purchased too, which um, wasn't from my wrist, but somewhere else. Um, the CD3046. I think also you can't get those anymore, but I found some. So I thought well, I'll get some while I I can, and then I've got the stock, and if I ever get anything which needs them again, I've got them. Oh, let's see what's in here. Oh, it's in here. Ah, okay. I know what this is. This is a review item from Banggood. They told me they're going to send me this, which is uh, quite nice. So I actually asked them for an extra item. So this is a bit of a clue. Maybe it's actually any good. I might even use it to replace my fake Heiko, our 951. Which is okay, but it's not the best user interface. KSGR, T12 soldering iron. Well, soldering station. This is the original um, tip that came with, obviously, the original holder, which is like the one I had before, which I didn't like um, for my Heiko one. So I asked them to send me one of these metal ones as well. Okay, so they sent me one of these too. I asked them for that. Now, this is actually um, the reason I asked for this one is because it's the same as the one I've already got. I purchased this myself for my Heiko one and retrofitted it basically. You can see it's got a different handle piece or grip, but the rest of it's identical. Right? Because um, I quite like that, it's actually a nice, um, that's a nice one. And actually did have a small um, plug on it like this before and I actually took that off and fitted it to the Heiko, or my fake Heiko. So I asked for one of those two to go with this. So I've got a, a uh, a nice one. I mean, this one might be fine. It might be that this one is better quality inside. Who knows? We'll find out. But um, if it's not, I've got another one here which will be better. I know these are better. So yeah, that'll be a good little review video and project. So thank you very much, Banggood, for sending me that. Um, we'll look at this in a separate video. Right. Let's see what's in here. Now I recently found a company which um, I didn't even know about before. I'm surprised they're actually quite big. But they're in my country. They're local. Well, well they're not local, but they're in the country. Same country as me. And they do a lot of electronic supply stuff. And um, 
so I finally be able to get hold of some Deoxa. Right, so I've got the Fader F5 and Deoxa D5. Little spray cans. Right, they're fairly small cans, but these things are still like fifty dollars each in New Zealand, so it's um, quite expensive. But this sort of thing, you just if you need to use something a bit more effective, then you need this. At least then I've got some better stuff to use. And in here, filters for desoldering, for actually for good. Right, it's for one of the desoldering guns. So I was actually hoping I could use these in my desoldering gun. It's not good, but I'm hoping I can actually like use the mesh or something in there, for example, when it's got this other filter material. So I might just try putting those in here and see if it helps the uh, filtration side of things and improves the airflow because I've got like a I've made a little filter thing for the back of it, but it's, it clogs up very easy because it's really small and it reduces the airflow quite a lot. So. I thought I'd get some actual ones from somebody else's iron or somebody else's ones. It's like the same design, but this cartridge that goes in it. You can see it on camera, it's a bit washed out. Alright, so it's the same kind of thing as my actual one here. So I can probably um, make it work. We'll see how we go. Alright, what's the next one? It's pretty heavy. I know what this is. And guess what? I don't actually need them now. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I pushed this these thinking I was going to need them, and it turns out actually, no, I don't need to use them. Well, I did need something like this, but this isn't actually the right one. So it's just a little, uh, what's it called? Taiwan end or something like that. It's got a special name now, I forgot what it's called. But, um, so it goes in of a threaded rod. And so then you can put a, it's a pivoting ball on there. And you just bolt that through onto something and then it's, that can act as like a push-pull thing. And this is actually purchased for my rod on lawnmower, which broke. And what happened is it's got some couplings like this on, a, on the end of a shaft for the actual um, forward reverse function which goes to the drive. And um, basically the rod just pulled out of it. Now the problem was that the rod is threaded as a uh, one mil pitch thread. I've already got some like this, but they're 1.5 mil pitch. Now the other problem was that the only other thing I could find is a 1.25 mil pitch which is what these are. I still couldn't find a one mil. So I got these thinking, well, these are closer. Maybe I can force it on. Anyway, what I've ended up doing is I've threaded on the one which stripped out. It wasn't completely stripped. It just must have just like wiggled its way out or something. And um, basically I've glued it back on. I've, I've shoved it, filled up with glue, like threaded heaps of stuff, screwed it back on, and that seems to be holding fine. But funny that, um, this is a 1.25 and let's say it's not going to fit, because at the time I didn't realise what the one on the lawnmower was, I just knew the one I had didn't fit, which is 1.5, so I thought, it's all I could find is 1.25, so I've got some them. But then I realised, actually that's not the right one either. So then I just did that glue approach, and sort it. <laughs> so, I've actually done a video on that. Um, well, I've recorded footage for it, I haven't actually done the video yet. It's sitting on my computer, so that would be a video you get to see at some point. Right, what's in here? Not too exciting, just some uh, case screws for MacBooks. A few sets of those. I've got lots of MacBooks which I picked up, and um, well, as you've probably already seen, and most of them don't have screws in. Well, I've only got a couple of screws, so I thought, right, I'll stock up on those. Not, not exciting. What's in this one? Something 6405. I think these are MOSFETs or something. Yeah, pretty sure the MOSFETs are MacBook. Anyway, they're Mac MacBook stuff anyway. 
So um, I've almost finished stocking up on stuff. There's very little thing, very few things I actually need to get now. I've got I think everything I need. I think it's come up because I realised I had some bad ones on the board, and I um, I thought, well, I better get some stock. But the thing is, buying these kinds of parts from China, you don't know what you're getting. They could be fake. They could be all right. You don't know till you try them out. Sometimes they're refurbished parts, you know, as in they've been taken off a board and repackaged to be like new. As long as they work, I don't care. But sometimes they're fake stuff. But we'll see. I've had some some fake chips before, more than once from China. But sometimes they're right, it's surprising. But they've managed to rescue something. Right, and this one. Looks very similar actually to the last one. Uh, small MacBook stuff. These are just hard drive screws. Right, so this is a uh, slightly larger package, but this is something I've actually purchased for, uh, for myself. Fortunately it wasn't free. I was hoping to get one free, but I couldn't really find anyone to approach. If you could do it, that would maybe be interesting. But anyway, so I've had to fork out a bit of money. But uh, a bit of a clue up here about what it actually is. And here we go. It's a uh, quick hot air station. 861DW or something like this. It comes with, that's a nice heavy stand. Earthing system, interesting. Looks like a box of nozzles. I'm not sure what sizes these actually are, I'm not measure them. No, it's 864 and whatever the hell that is. I don't know, that's what I'm guessing. Look at those at some point as well. So the reason I picked this up is because I've currently got a 10 ma hot air station, which works okay. You know, it produces hot air, does its job, but when you're doing particularly tr uh, tricky circuitry and high density circuit boards like on the MacBooks and like that, then it's actually struggling a bit to get the chips off because it doesn't have enough airflow and that sort of stuff. So I thought, right, well, I'll get one of these things. Oh. No more virgin. Right. So it's got individual temperature and airflow settings, which is what I like, and it's also got the presets too. So there's plenty of views about these things online anyway. So I probably don't need to go too detailed in doing a review, but I probably will do some comparisons with the 10 mile and do some side by side stuff and um, see how they actually compare. So that's in there, sits it on there. Okay, drops in. So, that in itself is quite nice, it means I can leave it on the bench. Um, I may have to figure out where I'm going to put this. My 10 miles currently up on the shelf, Ooh, quite high up up here, because um, it keeps the lead out of the way, just hanging off the shelf. Otherwise, it drags everywhere across the bench and just gets in the bloody way, and it's really irritating. So, having this system, it's a bit shorter for the start, I think, which means it needs to be a bit closer. But having this nice stand like that, um, that will certainly help, as I can leave it sitting on the bench maybe and we'll put a shuck us in the corner or something like that. As long as this isn't dragging across the bench. Plug it in, try powering it up. Make sure it actually works. Anyway, it's being pedantic. Alright, it's asleep apparently. Let's wake her up. 350, 75%. So this is supposed to do 120 litres of air. Yep. 
So when it's cooling down, it actually increases the airflow in order to cool down more rapidly, which is a pretty cool feature. Nice. So it goes with a small tip on it. Oh yeah, that's much better. That is much better than mine. That has got a much higher airflow, which is brilliant. So I'll put it on 400 maximum air. See, this should be pretty quick. Totally off. So on my other unit, I would have probably taken twice as long with a higher temperature. And on my other, my 10 mile one, I have to use about 450 or something like to do large devices on these kinds of um, these boards, where you get, because there's a lot of heat sinking on these boards. So um, it would have taken a lot longer with a higher temperature. So that was a lower temperature and it took a whole time. So, well worth it. But it's pretty, it's like a simple user interface. I mean, you saw, I've already like used it, figured it out without reading the manual. It does have password setting on it, so you can actually lock it out, but that's obviously for like production environments. We really don't want the operators messing with the gear. Um, for this kind of situation, it's you know, not necessary at all. Calibration, so you can set the calibration as well. Place heating element, tells you how to dismantle it. Cool, so I just have to figure out where I'm going to put it. Well, I've got real nice stuff anyway, 